Chris, what is our third main topic today? This one comes from Karen McCain. Hey, John and crew, longtime listener and fellow Canadian here. Yay! I saw some comments online with regards to why the MCU is so much more popular than the DCEU. The DCEU had no cohesion. Every character seems to be in its own universe. Suicide Squad movie was in Midway City, yet no mention of the Doom Patrol. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't Hawkman live there? All right, thanks a lot for saying that in, Karen. And this is like one of the big ongoing conversations and questions about why is the MCU more successful than the DCU? Why has it been so much more successful? And listen, this isn't really, a, we're not asking the question, why is the MCU better than the DCU? That's a matter of subjective taste. But I think you'd have to have been living under a bridge to not understand and acknowledge, no matter how big of a DC fan or Marvel fan you are, that the MCU has been more successful. You may question about whether it deserves to have been more successful, but there is no debating. The MCU has clearly been more successful than the DCEU. Whether that's fair or not fair, right or an injustice, that's the way it is. And I think everybody acknowledges that. But the then question is always coming up about why has it been more successful? And whenever that question comes up, I often find in the communities that, that I kind of gravitate around, it always comes down to, well, the DCU didn't build up their universe first, or they didn't do a properly cohesive cinematic universe, like, like you're saying, Karen, or they didn't do this and they didn't do that. And I want to put forth to you that none of that is the reason the MCU has been more successful than the DCU. Uh, maybe they could be contributing factors to some way, shape, or form, and everybody will have a different opinion about this, but here's what I believe is the one singular factor as to why the MCU has been more successful than the DCU. It's not about that one launched with a bunch of solo films and then did a group film. It has nothing to do with that. I always talk about this. You know what? George Lucas put out Star Wars. He didn't need to do a solo Luke Skywalker movie first. He didn't need to then do a solo Han Solo movie and then a solo R2 and 3PO adventure, and then a solo Obi-Wan Kenobi show, and then you do Star Wars. No, he was able to just do Star Wars, and, and there you go. Here's the one singular reason, in my opinion. And obviously there are many, many smaller reasons, but if you had to point to one main reason, the reason is this. As far as the general audience is concerned, the MCU has just made better movies. Boom. <laughs> I know that sounds radical. I know that sounds, you know, way out there, but it just comes down to it. The general audience has found that the MCU movies have just been better movies. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler. Here it is. Now, look, I'm not saying they are definitively better movies. I'm not saying you have to believe they're better movies, but there's no getting around. The consensus among the general movie-going audience is that the MCU movies have simply, they've just produced better product. The reason the MCU was, was able to take off wasn't because the end scene and the post credit scene of Iron Man, Nick, Nick Cage, Nick Cage, Nick Fury, Nick Cage shows up at the end of Iron Man, ladies and gentlemen. Nick Fury shows up at the end of Iron Man and says, I'm putting together something called the Avengers Initiative. That's not why people, like, why Iron Man was so successful. It was successful because people went to go see Iron Man. They just loved the movie. To this day, a lot of people still say it's one of their favorite comic book movies ever. And here's the thing. If you go over and start looking at the highest rated comic book films of all time, you're going to see a pattern. So, Jonathan, let's bring up that, that web page here. Mm -hmm. So, we're looking at the, the highest, highest rated comic book films of all time. Well, the first one is Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse. Well-deserved place. Not an MCU movie, by the way. Not an MCU movie. But well-deserved place is Spider-Man right there. Then you get The Incredibles, great. And then we get Black Panther at 96. That's an MCU. Then we get another MCU with Avengers Endgame with a 94. Then we get a non-MCU and non-DCEU movie with Logan. Then we get the non-DCEU, The Dark Knight. And then we're back to the MCU, Iron Man, the aforementioned Iron Man at 94%. Another non-DCE movie, uh, Superman. And then we get our first DCEU movie in the number nine position with Wonder Woman. Love that movie. Then we go on. Another DCEU movie with Thor Ragnarok. Next, another, sorry, another MCU movie with Thor Ragnarok. Next, another MCU movie with Spider-Man No Way Home at 93%. Then we get The Incredibles, non-MCU or DCU. Then we go a non-MCU Spider-Man 2. Then 
the MCU Spider-Man Homecoming with 92%, another MCU movie with Guardians of the Galaxy at 92%, another MCU movie at Marvel's The Avengers at 91%. Uh, then we get the non-DCU Teen Titans Go, uh, Robocop, which they count in there at 91%, another MCU movie with Spider-Man Far From Home, another MCU movie with Captain America Civil War, and then in this number 21 spot, we finally get another, our second DCEU movie, uh, the fantastic Shazam, which is my second second or third favorite DCU movie, followed up by another DCU movie, uh, also vying for that number two or number three favorite spot of mine in the DCU uh, pantheon, Suicide Squad. Obviously, number one to me is Man of Steel. But again, it's just going back to it. You don't have to agree with it. I don't have to agree with it, all that kind of stuff. But it's just understood that to the general movie-going audience, it only comes down to one thing. Who made the movies that the audience enjoyed more? That's it. And while for me, the DCU has put out some total bangers for me, like obviously Man of Steel, Suicide Squad, Shazam, Loved Wonder Woman, all that kind of stuff. But just generally speaking, the audience has been conditioned that they are more likely to have a good time if they go to an MCU film. And listen, I, I'm not saying that to be controversial, but I think most people, such your feelings, you know it to be true. I, I mean, it's, it's just the way it is. And it is that reason and that reason alone that I think the MCU has been more successful because the audience just believes it. If we go to an MCU movie, there's a higher chance than, and listen, because I'll tell you what, if the, even though the Robert Pattinson, Matt Reeves, the Batman movie is not a DCEU proper movie, I guarantee you that even though that movie did incredibly well with $770 million at the box office, I believe that was the number. Ray, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But I think it was like $770 million at the box office. If the DCU had put out films that the general audience liked more, I think that the Batman movie, even though it's not a DCU movie, that thing could have been eight fifty, nine hundred million dollars million, right? I just think that's the case. We want to take a second and thank the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Now, guys, you know I love Manscaped. You've heard me go on and on about the Lawnmower 4.0 and mm, that body wash. I love it so much. And so we got to ask, guys, have you started your spring cleaning yet? The carpets need cleaning, the drapes need dusting, and your lawn needs mowing, gentlemen. And you guys know Manscaped is more than just one product. They have a whole lineup of products to help you guys feeling, smelling, and looking your or best. And so Manscaped is proud to present to you the Performance Package 4.0, which is the only tool that you need to keep your boys looking, smelling, and feeling good this spring. Now, to start off with, you get the Lawnmower 4.0. Guys, we have talked about this. What is wrong with us? Why have we for so long been using these terrible tools that were never meant for cutting our hair down there? The razor clipper things on our electric razors. That's barbaric, guys. You need the Lawnmower 4.0. And then there's the weed whacker. You guys have heard our own Ray Aura talk about this thing. He loves using it to get that hair in your nose and the ear hair. And then they offer lots of other stuff like the crop preserver. It's an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. The crop reviver. It's a spray on toner for your balls. And of course, they've got the perfect grooming tool for your face with the Plow 2.0, the perfect razor for the finest shave on that face. So guys get 20% off plus free shipping with the code CAMPIA. That's C-A-M-P-E-A -E at manscaped.com. That's 20% off in free shipping with the promo code CAMPIA at manscaped.com. It's time to throw out your old hygiene habits and upgrade your life. Anyway, Rob, it's a long-term discussion and it's a discussion we'll probably be having for years to come. But if posed with the question, why has the MCU been more successful than the DCU? Not why has it been better, but why has it been more successful? How would you approach that? I think the reason is actually quite simple. The characters in the Marvel movies are much more relatable to the audience themselves in the sense that if you look at Tony Stark, sure, we don't know what it's like to be super rich, but he's just a dude. You meet him, he's in the back of a military truck having a drink. You know, is that you want to throw a gang sign? You immediately relate to him as a person. Sure, he becomes Iron Man later, but his central quest is he's a man that has decided that what he was doing in his life is wrong and he needs to make a change. So even though you've got superhero action and he battles Iron Monger and Obadiah Stane and all that, the story is about a human being trying to figure himself out, realizing I could be a better person and fundamentally must change. So what is happening in Iron Man, even though it's a superhero movie, 
everybody in the audience can relate to it as a person. Even like Thor, he's a god from Asgard, but he's got a daddy issue and his mm. brother's a dick. So it's like, it's a, it's a story about a family and we like immediately relate. Captain America, Steve Rogers is a nebbishy dude. You know, he's not big, he's not special, he's like nothing, but he's got pure heart, a, a pure heart. So many of us are that guy. He's a nerd, super soldier serum, but still it's his nerddom that allows him to become the Captain America that we love. So the MCU and indeed the Marvel characters lean into that. Mm. Whereas I can't relate, if I'm a Kryptonian, I don't know what it's like to have super strength. And they never humanized the Superman character. You know, the reason people love Christopher Reeves, Superman, is it had the Americana, the whole beginning, the whole first 30 minutes of that movie when he's in Smallville and, you know, he's, he, he, he gets the, 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 the big man on campus, the big football players, you know, they don't treat him very well. So we relate to Christopher Reeve's Superman. And I think the reason people didn't like Man of Steel as much, where you and I, I think look beyond that, he wasn't enough of a human being. He didn't have enough, like he didn't have, you didn't see him like try and date a girl or something like that. It was just, it was, it was the Superman of it all. And Wonder Woman, while it was good and she related to man's world, she's still a goddess, you know? And so when you're watching the DC movies, uh, Shazam humanized the character more. a lot, mm -hmm. yeah. But the Marvel characters are inherently stories of people, human beings. Strip away the superhero ness of it all. Yep. Whereas the DC movies, I think, have a hard time. We don't relate to them as much. And the thing is, there was not as enough humanity in Man of Steel for people to love it as much as we do. To me, I've always seen it as a great science fiction first contact story. I look beyond the fact that, but there isn't there isn't the Steve Rod the nebbishy Steve Rogers before he's a super soldier. We don't get enough of that, and I think that's why people love the Marvel movies so much is because we relate to all of those characters as people. They're like our friends. I don't necessarily relate to Wonder Woman. I'd like to, but I don't. <laughs> Chris? I thought we were going to get out of that just all on like a sweet note. And yeah, then, we're all boom. there. We boom. almost made it. Uh, but but Chris, you see this, you know, and and if you're asked the question, like, the the in you know unarguable truth that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been more successful, mm -hmm. but why has it been more successful? I agree with Rob that it's a character study situation. If you take away all the superpowers, I still want to watch these stories. Mm -hmm. I love that most of these characters. It ultimately boils down to, I've let someone down, or I don't want to let someone down. Tony Stark despite all of his money and success, never could live up to his father's expectations. And it was all just demon on his back for his entire life. Steve Rogers you say just- demon in a bottle? Oh, a demon in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Rogers was never given the opportunity to, to show his worth because in, a, in that current time, I'm not a brawny guy. I'm not a scientist. What am I supposed to do? I just want to do something for my country and for my fellow man. You know, for Thor, I'm constantly letting down my father. Yeah. For scarlet uh, uh for black widow i need to like atone for the sins of my past all of those things are so so interesting so then when you try to humanize some characters by telling me that their moms have the same name and i know that's been memefied to death but still it falls flat i need more and it's really cool that you've got gadgets and superpowers and ooh, sometimes your shit's dark and gritty man look at all those sepia tones <laughs> like it's not it's not enough you got to deliver on the heart and i think that's what's been missing more so and that's what shazam did in spades gosh and, and, and well that's what shazam did in spades that's what aquaman. like on the marvel side aquaman actually did that yeah. too a lot um i love his on dad the marvel side why we i think why everybody in this room loved miss marvel so much because like i said strip yeah. away the superpowers is still a super interesting question it's gonna be interesting to see how black adam handles that aspect that you guys are talking about mm -hmm. like are they going to be able to find some way to get us to identify with adam as an individual before he just becomes the supreme badass because if right? he's if he's on that i kill people kick right that still makes me a hero and they justify all this i can find that to be very compelling Right. They just need to do it well. Guys, the question is for you. I mean, I, like we all have to agree that the MCU has been more successful. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to feel that it's been better, but it's more successful. Why do you think that has been the case? What do you think is the underlying root of that? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there.